Okay, good afternoon, David. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming along and, and being part of our ICANN campaign here at RNC. You're very welcome. I've got a few questions for you, just, just a few things just to ask you about your thoughts and opinions on various issues. So first of all, can I ask you, um, how do you feel it's changed for people with visual impairments in specialist education since you were a student here at RNC? Well, fairly dramatically. I mean, the nature of blindness has changed. So for many youngsters, they've got more than one challenge. So in my day, you, you, you couldn't see, but you didn't necessarily have other disabilities alongside it. And what's also changed is the number of students here who, at the RNC, who have lost their sight during their teens, mm -hmm. um, their, their childhood and their teens, rather than being blind from birth, as I was. And I think that brings extra challenges. But the big difference is the way in which the college operates. It operates with the students, not to them. Mm. It responds to student need. It is liberating in the sense of not just mobility, but in living skills, in social skills, in, in the whole gamut that makes it possible for people mm. to open up life in the future and to use their talent to the full. Yeah, so in, in terms of the future, do you feel it's important that uh, an establishment such as RNC continue to do what they do in the way that they're doing? Yes, I do. And, and with the new vision of it being an outreach college, that it is about social enterprise, but it's also about the future of young people in terms of the world of education and work, mm. uh, and to reach that out across the country. I, I've always believed that this should be a a staging post that to colleges that specialise and particularly where there's residential facility should be a, a, a staging post on the way to independent living and to integration if you like in, in life as a whole mm. and that's what the college is now doing. Yeah, yeah and in terms of the college's work and towards people's perceptions of visual impairment you know, when you go back to when you started your career in the 70s do you think people's perceptions of visual impaired people have changed since then? I think they have. I mean, I think they've changed for the better. We, we, we go in fits and starts, so um, tremendous change in attitude towards disability temporarily, unfortunately, around the Paralympics. We've got to somehow return to that. And obviously, how those with blindness and partial sight are viewed and, and are approached is partly determined by how people in society change their attitudes to disability as a whole, so yeah. you can't separate the two. I think um, um, the important thing is firstly to get across to young people the confidence and mm. self-belief that makes it possible to get to, to go out and do what you really want to do and never to take no for an answer. And secondly, to change the attitude of wider society, including employers, just so that they actually think, yeah, I will give that person an interview. Mm. I will see what they're going to do. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask them what they can do rather than make a presumption that they can't do it. And that, this is why this campaign is so important. Yes. Because the I can is saying, look, I, I know at least until technology improves, I'm not going to be able to fly a plane. Mm. Although theoretically, we probably could. Um, I, I'm not going to drive a bus, but I do know what I can do. And I want you to be supportive in helping me do it. I think that's the message we've got to get across. Yeah, yeah. And with your career in politics going through the party in the House of Commons, do you find there's been many barriers or anything that's held you back because of your blindness? I think at times there's been barriers in terms of people's presumption about what you might not be able to do. Mm. And if you like, a, a little drawing of breath as to can this guy work on equal terms has this guy actually got a job that I would have liked? Mm. Uh, and that kind of psychological barrier. I think a lot of the, what you might have described as prejudice has, has diminished. I think partly because there's so many blind people now doing really first class things. Mm. And it's very hard for people to stereotype someone as being highly dependent and to patronize them if they're doing things which quite clearly require uh, the highest level of competence and yes. performance and I, I think that's probably what I've done best in my life. I'm very proud of the things I've done in terms of uh, local government and national government and policy and changes in education and the Home Office and Work and Pensions but actually the thing I've probably achieved most from is literally demonstrating that someone with uh, sight loss who can't see mm. has actually been able to work on 
equal terms at that level. And if that changes the attitude of parents who have discovered that their child's blind, if that changes the confidence of a youngster, if that changes the attitude of an employer or a broader society, then that's, that's undoubtedly the best thing I'll have achieved. Yes, yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, we, we say now that obviously prejudices and attitudes towards visually impaired people, certainly in the workplace, and that kind of environment has changed. But we're still finding these days that the employment rates for disabled people are, are very high. And what would your advice be to somebody who is leaving education and looking to go into employment? What would your advice be from your experience, from your point of view? Well, confidence without belligerence, mm -hmm. the ability to sell the whole person, not just what course you've carried through, what... Uh, certificates you hold so that you're actually presenting someone whose enthusiasm for work, whose commitment to doing the job, whose 150% preparedness to put in the extra time, because you have to, to, to make this work, yeah. and the ability to say, look, there is something called access to work, there are support systems available, uh, wh why not give me a chance, why mm. not uh, allow me to, um, to demonstrate in practice what I can do recognising that I might actually change the, uh, the way in which other people work and the attitudes around. In other words, we, we might get something out of the workforce that you haven't thought about yes. by employing someone who's demonstrating with, the, with their own skills uh, the ability to go the extra mile. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, and aside from your, obviously your example of, of being blind and being able to achieve to get to the, the, the office of... Um, Home Secretary and the like, what, who, what would you say was your, your greatest achievement or what are you most particularly proud of in your career that you've done? Well, I think the most amazing thing was actually to get to university in the first place because I didn't have any qualifications and go into evening class and then day release from work when I, when I got a job doing clerk typing mm. um, was probably in personal terms the biggest achievement because I look back and think, God, I had a how did I keep going through those years? How did I, what drove me inside me to actually believe that I could, could do it? In terms of what I did in, in government, so much really, the most mm. difficult thing was dealing with the aftermath of the attack on the World Trade Center on the yes, 11th of yeah. September 2000, uh, nine, uh, 2001. That, that uh, was both a political and a personal challenge. Mm. Uh, and I, I would not want ever to have to go through that again. Um, probably the most enjoyable aspect of, of my time was when I was the Education and Employment Secretary because mm. we were putting the investment in, we were seeing the transformation of the life chances of children from the very early years through primary, secondary and, and the opening up of access to university. And young people were getting jobs in numbers we'd never seen for, for a quarter of a century. Mm. All of that was both rewarding for me and was what I was supposed to be there for. It was actually delivering mm. rather than just talking about it. And to be honest, uh, in, I mean, I've been involved in formal politics as a councillor and then as an MP for 45 years. We talk too much and we act too little. Mm. <laughs> and that brings me on quite nicely to my next question in terms of acting and people who've actually strived and achieved. Who would you say was the most inspirational person you've worked with from the start of your career up to now? Well, probably three people, um, if you don't mind. Not One was a, a teacher, Wilf King, who died uh, in 2014. I did an obituary for him in The Guardian. And he came down to the Technical College when I was at the RNC, when it was in Shrewsbury. Mm -hmm. And he gave up his time one day a week to help me get what was then O-level physics, now GCSE. And without that, I would, without his commitment, I wouldn't have got that um, science qualification, which helped enormously. The second was a, a, a guy called uh, Ron Ironmonger, who was the leader of Sheffield City Council, who, who didn't patronise me. He, he taught me the, the rough and the smooth. So mm. uh, when I'd got things wrong, he would cut me down like he would have done anyone else. And you think that's come, what people need? Absolutely. To be told. Come, yeah. no, no paternalism. Mm -hmm came round, put his arm around his shoulder and said, look, you can do it, but you've got to learn the, the trade. You've got to be able to put up with the rough as well as the, the smooth. And the third was Tony Blair. And it's unfashionable mm -hmm. now to praise Tony Blair as a great prime minister. I thought he was inspirational and I was very uh, privileged to work with him. Yeah, yeah. 
That's great, David. Thanks very much for coming in and being part of this. Uh, it's, it's nice to see someone who's gone through RNC, has gone off and had a really successful career and has had the chance to actually come back and, and work again with us. So we're really looking forward very, to your input. Very, very so I'll shake your hand, David. Thank very you very much for coming Very pleased to have done in. it. And I can is exactly the right slogan. Absolutely. Thank you very Thank much you very indeed. Much. Thank you.